Who loves Stargate? It's been like well over 20 years since I've watched that movie and I've never really watched the show. But when I was a kid, I loved that movie. The mix of like ancient Egyptian stuff with modern futuristic technology was about the coolest thing a little 10 year old Jeremy could imagine. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week I printed out this sick squad of, you know, undead mummified minis from One Page Rules. And I built this Stargate to go with my modular uh, Egyptian set that I made previously. All in all, it turned out pretty cool. So let's take a look at how I built it. At first, I didn't know I was gonna build a Stargate. I just set out to add to this existing set with something. I wanted something maybe like a centerpiece, maybe some kind of big pyramid steps or a temple. But looking at the minis, I remembered Stargate from my childhood and knew, you know, that would be a perfect build. It would look cool and, you know, portals are just ubiquitous with tabletop gaming. So this was the perfect thing. I used the thickest foam that I had on hand and my circle cutter jig to make a six inch diameter circle. There's always something immensely satisfying about cutting circles from foam. On the other hand, there's always something immensely annoying about breaking and having to reset your hot wire while cutting circles from foam. I cut out a second smaller circle on the interior so that I'd be left with a thick outer ring. This can be done pretty easily by just like pushing the foam onto a cool wire with a fair bit of pressure, then turning it on and letting the you know wire melt in and straighten out until it hits that spot that you want. Then you can you know simply do your normal spin cut and be left with a nice looking ring. Since it would be sitting on a flat base, I could just cut off the section with my cross cut and throw it out. This way it would just sit nicely on the ground. Next, I split the ring into three sections, or I guess layers. I didn't make them exactly the same. In instead, I made the outer ones exactly the same as each other with the center one being slightly wider. I knew I'd wanna do something with light inside this, so I wanted a good amount of space in the middle to work with. But I still wanted the outer rings to look big and chunky like thick stones, so this seemed like about the best balance I could come up with. I did, however, want the center ring to be thinner on the inside. So, you know, they'd be flush on the outside, but there'd be a little recess area or groove on the inner part of the circle where I could hide some string lights. It took a bit of thinking to figure out the easiest way to do this. And eventually I realized I could just run it along my fence and kind of freehand move the ring to keep the cut consistent. Now, Shifting Lands definitely has an actual tool to do this job perfectly, but in a pinch, this just got it done. Then using the scrap of foam that was left over from the first circle, I just cut out a base. The size was mostly uh, decided by the scrap of foam that I had. It took a bit of cleanup and squaring to get everything flat, true, and you know, with proper 90 degree corners. But a simple little rectangle would be kind of bland. So I tilted my wire and chamfered some of the edges to give it just a bit of simple flair. It's not a big thing, but it does help it not look just like a block of foam. Then I was on to carving on the stones, you know, the cutout lines, the grout lines, which was really easy, but a very tedious task. Working on circles, you really have to take your time to lay out your stones and your lines. And this is tricky because you're not just, you know, measuring off of, you know, square straight corners. And you want to make sure that line is perpendicular at 90 degrees to the edges all the way around so that they meet up properly when they, you know, reconnect wrapping around. I like to do this with a very sharp pencil first. And then once I'm sure I didn't screw up the layout, I come back in with a knife to deepen those grooves and then follow it again with a pencil to bevel them. This is slow, but worthwhile, especially on something, you know, like a centerpiece. This slow detail work is the perfect time to talk to you about this week's sponsor, One Page Rules. I love One Page Rules. Like not only do they offer a free and approachable set of rules to play with, they also supply hordes of fantastic miniatures to print out at home and use in whatever kind of game you play. Now, if you play OPR, Warhammer, Frostgrave, Warcry, whatever skirmish game you can think of, they're a great resource for unique and affordable proxies. 
They have running themed armies and are constantly adding new models for you to use. Now, if you don't play skirmish games, these models are equally as good for hordes of villains or NPCs in your RPG. Do you need a ton of city guards, soldiers, or mercenaries? Well, their Duchies of Vinci models are perfect for this. You can quickly populate an entire city or play out an epic battle where your players are fighting alongside the King's Guard. Play a sci-fi game like Starfinder or Stargrave? Well, the alien hives got you covered. Of course, my favorite at the moment are the mummified undead. I had such a blast painting these models up for this week, and I'm really looking forward to planning out some kind of an Egyptian themed one shot to use them in. Now, starting in July, their Patreon will offer three special army releases with over 60, yes, six zero minis, as well as a bonus 30 plus model welcome pack, uh, over 25 game maids. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, all that you can print out easily at home. The models all come pre-supported both in fully combined versions, which I personally prefer, and as individual parts. If you're more technical with your painting or want to do some customization, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check them out for yourself. Thanks guys for sponsoring this video. Okay, okay, so the, the detail work still isn't over with. There's no way this Stargate could have a basic looking front with just a few big stones. I had to carve in some smaller segments with some weird alien symbols on them so that the gate could be, you know, look like it could be rotated and unlocked. It had to look like a puzzle. I just freehanded some simple designs that I felt read like a nice kind of mixture between hieroglyphics and alien text. For good measure, I did carve in some larger, more, you know, traditional looking Egyptian style hieroglyphics on the top outer ring. But I probably put the most effort into carving the symbols on the base, some weird alien text. But this time around, I also added some big traditional, you know, but still kind of made up Egyptian style symbols, a beetle and an owl. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how these came out, especially since it can be really difficult to carve lettering or designs with curves in them into foam without tearing it. The trick here is simply just to use a sharp tool and go very slowly, feel the foam. And if you feel it starting to tear, just hold Hold up and, you know, take your time. But if these symbols on the stone were gonna act like some sort of combination lock, the Stargate would need some pointers on the outer ring to line them up with. Now, I thought about doing foam triangles to look more like the OG ring from the film, but instead decided to sift through some bits and parts of random minis to find some objects that, you know, would sort of feel Egyptian, but also work as pointers. I eventually found pairs of three different shapes, a ram skull, a falcon, and a head of some kind of stork-like bird. I could use these to create a pattern that made the whole thing feel even more puzzle-like, you know, like a, like a lock, and you know, players love a good puzzle. Before I mounted them though, I went through and textured the foam with a rock. Much like my original Egypt set, I took, you know, great care to sort of dent the stones individually along the grout lines to really make it feel like they were three-dimensional and made of individual stones. It was then time for the lights, and I had the perfect thing. Ages ago, I bought a bunch of cheap LED string lights on Amazon in a variety of colors. They're pretty good for crafting because they're really cheap, they come in different colors, and they're already wired and include a battery and a very slim battery holder with a switch. The strings, however, are pretty long, and the LEDs are spaced several inches apart. To make this work, I twisted the wires back and forth onto itself in order to shorten it overall and to make it like an appropriate length to wrap around the circle. And I did my best to still keep the spacing between the lights fairly even. To attach them, I used some double-sided foam tape. And this would prove to be far less annoying and less painful on the fingers than hot glue. In my experience, these lights on this like wire are really difficult to manage and glue in place with hot glue because they just wanna come out and this tape was a great idea. So I'm glad I came up with that. I needed to keep the switch and the battery holder accessible for the future. So I just cut a simple groove in the base that I could slide it into. You know, I made sure that there was enough slack on the wire that I'd later be able to pull the battery pack completely out and change the battery if needed. This build was really starting to come together, but I needed something to diffuse the light. Rather than using just like some clear plastic and trying to tint it somehow, I used these colored plastic sheets that I had left over from doing my studio lights. I've shown these before. These can be bought on Amazon for really cheap. They're just color gels for lights, but they're really awesome for crafts. I'll put a link to them and the other lights in the video description if they are still available. Now these sheets have a protective film on both sides, which is really handy. I only removed one side of the film on them though, the inner side. 
so that I could glue it in place. This would leave the protective film on the outer area, which would act as a ready-made masking film for when I painted the foam. And honestly, that was probably the smartest thing I did this whole build. Unfortunately, the blue plastic may have helped with the color, but it didn't really diffuse the light very much at all. You could still see the LEDs and the battery holder super clearly. Figured I could just diffuse it all by using some blue acrylic gel. Now Vallejo makes this stuff for water and I thought it would work great here. I knew it would dry pretty translucent, so I was pretty sure that I needed to coat both sides of the plastic with it. This meant I had to apply a coat on each piece's inner surface before assembling the thing and you know locking it in. In. This was kind of awkward, but it did go together pretty well. One problem is that when I glued the plastic to the first ring, I didn't really make sure that the ring, the foam ring was stretched appropriately. And if that makes sense, you know, since these rings are cut open at the bottom, they have a lot of play in them. You can bend them in and out to starting the circle. And in my concentration on not making a mess with the gel, I neglected to make sure that all the rings were layered and sitting nice and even. This resulted in an assembly that wasn't as, you know, flush and nice as it could have been. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I jumped outside and spray primed these the way I did with my earlier set. This is just a coat of white primer, you know, dusted from a distance, being careful not to melt too much. Then a second coat with a Citadel bone colored primer that's a lot more aggressive on foam, which would allow me to melt in some textures in a very controlled manner. It's also a good opportunity to prime the minis of the day that were, you know, primed with the same stuff. Since the spray primer doesn't get in every deep groove, it is helpful to go back in and brush over some watered down acrylic paint in the same color before moving on to the very magical step of oil washes. Now, we all know by now that I love these oil washes and they really show their effectiveness when painting sandstone. A very simple oil wash mixing just raw umber and burnt sienna creates a wonderful tone to go on top of that light tan primer. Now it flows quickly and evenly, just like it's just a dream to work with. The low spots and the groove just like attract it like a magnet and you can go completely wild since it won't actually stain your paint and you can just remove the excess really easily once it's dry. I'm telling you, if you've been crafting terrain for a while and you have yet to make the leap to oil washes, you are missing out. These might seem intimidating, but really they are about as simple as it gets. Now the satisfying part, cutting off that plastic film to hopefully reveal a nice clean blue plastic. You know what, this worked really well. There was a bit of oil that got underneath, but again, oil is really easy to clean off the surface with some paint thinner. I was a little concerned about how visible that battery holder still was though. Ugh. Uh, but I pressed on and applied my gel to the outer layers. This time around, I put more effort into how it was applied. I wanted that texture to look, you know, more like a swirling portal. So I made sure that there was nice, good, fairly even coverage. And then I used an airbrush to kind of just like push around and sculpt the texture. This is a technique commonly used by modelers when doing ripples on water. And it was a good fit here. It was looking pretty good, uh, but you know, I'd have to wait till it was dry to see how it really turned out. And well, uh, the gel looked fantastic. I, I totally love the color, but it was still way too translucent. And you could really see those LEDs, uh, but worse, you could still see that damn tombstone shaped battery holder. Thankfully, the way I had set it up so that you could pull it out of the bottom, change the battery, meant that I could just pull it out, you know, carve a wider groove in the foam and put it back in horizontally, you know, with a little section of foam cut out so I could get my finger in there to flip the switch. And this really helped a lot, but... You can still see those lights. Not terrible, but not ideal. And the uh, lights themselves weren't casting as much of a light onto the stone as I had hoped. I thought, what the hell? Let's break out some turquoise ink and let's build up that color a bit and give the uh, stone around it some source lighting. Unfortunately, the turquoise ink I have is only semi-transparent, not fully transparent. Now this would be great for blocking out those, you know, lights there. Uh, but it made it apply a bit more white and opaque than I would really have liked. I still think it was helpful, but it definitely could still use a wash or spray from some truly translucent, uh, very vibrant ink after, but I, I don't have any. As one last minute detail, I grabbed some paper to protect the outside of the build, grabbed some white ink and a paintbrush, and I just kind of splattered on some white speckles to give it a bit of a galaxy look. While I think what I did here with the gels and LEDs is pretty neat, if I were to do it again, I think I'd instead just try my hand at, you know, airbrushing a really nice galaxy looking pattern on some kind of flat material instead. But either way, I'm glad I tried this out because as usual, I learned some things along the way. 
This build was really fun for me. I always have extra enjoyment on a project when it brings back childhood memories. And the childhood memories of watching Stargate in some dirty theater back in 1994 were very strong. I can see myself sitting there with a giant, you know, bag of popcorn covered in some sort of probably now banned oil coating, 10 years old, wearing a hyper color t-shirt and size probably 52 exhaust jeans from Stitches. Oh, those are the days. This build will be equally usable for war gamers and RPGs, so that makes it a win in my books. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave me a comment and a like, and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's it, that's all, guys. I Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna grab some crafting or hobby supplies, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have a bunch of stuff that I use explained, listed, and linked. And uh, shopping through those links helps fund the production of this channel and these videos. A really great way you can help support this channel is through Patreon. Those funds go directly into making this channel better and keeping it online. And I couldn't do it without the help of all the generous people there. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Now, I gotta go watch Stargate.